We're going to take a look at what happened in the Bears' loss to Oregon, 42-24 to last Saturday. I'm going to break down some film. I'm talking to Coach Wilcox, coming up right now. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Bear Insider, Ultimate Insider Podcast. I am Mike Pulaski, former Bears quarterback, radio analyst, and Hall of Famer. Today we were talking about Cal's loss to Oregon over the weekend, 42-24. to Obviously, the Ducks, a very talented team, coming in at number 11 after the game, moving to number 8, so a top 10 team in the country. They're talented at just about every spot on the field. Great quarterback in Bo Nix, great receivers. Uh, Hudson is a stud. Running backs are very good. Offensive line, especially really, really talented. Probably as good an offensive line or the best offensive line the Bears have faced this year. So offensively really good. In the secondary, very good. Good edge rush guys, good linebackers. So good all across the board. And it was, and you know, they played like it in Memorial Stadium this weekend. They played like it versus the Bears. They have a Fun scheme. Coach Dillingham, their offensive coordinator, is running a really fun scheme to watch for me as a quarterback and coach. Watching what they do, uh, it's really good. It's really tailored pretty well to the guys that they have on campus at those positions. And so I will break down film in just a second of what they do offensively that can give a defense fits. And it definitely gave the Bears fits this weekend. Um, when they were running this stuff on offense. So I'll break that down a little bit. And again, like I said, I'll be talking to Coach coming up as well, get his thoughts on the issue as well. I know I want to get into it up front in that uh, Kai Milner came in at the end of the game this last week and threw two touchdown passes. And I am a huge Kai Milner fan. Uh, the dude is awesome. Uh, his personality is awesome. I think he's a really good quarterback. I think he's got all the tools and everything else. But before everybody starts going down this quarterback controversy road, I think Kai deserves to be a Cal quarterback at some point. Um, but you don't start a quarterback controversy in a game like that uh, where when Kai comes in, he's not going up against their ones. The situation of the game is different. They're playing different schemes and everything else. And so to be fair to Jack, and it hasn't been super fair to Jack this year because there he has been getting hit all the time. He has been uh, under pressure a lot. Bears haven't been able to run the football. I just want to say, I love Kai Milner. I think he's awesome. Uh, I, I can't wait to see him as the Bears' starting quarterback. However, I don't think this creates a quarterback controversy. I think Jack is still your starter. I think Kai is still your backup. And you try to get them reps and try to expand and, and improve and develop uh, younger players at the same time. So that's my opinion. Um, I like both those dudes. And uh, I can't wait to see Kai as a starter. But I don't think this creates a quarterback controversy. I think Jack is still your starter. I think that's who you go with there up front. So that's my thoughts on that up front. Now let's talk about what Oregon was doing on offense. Um, they love to run the vertical passing game. They love to do things that get your eyes out of place. You lose eye discipline as a defense. The Bears came into this game with a lot of injuries on the defensive side of the ball, from Lou Hearns to Blake Anzalatis to you know the whole linebacking core has been shifted around and moved around. Uh, the only guy who was stable back there was uh, Jackson Sermon. So in the secondary, you had new guys playing both sides of the ball. And as a result, the stuff that Oregon was doing got the defense out of sorts. You could try to play a man, but Oregon had some really good speed out there, so tough to play a man uh, with guys who haven't gotten a ton of reps at the starting positions on defense. You could try to zone them off, but if you zone them off, you better get to the quarterback. And so neither one of those approaches was working for the Bears. Right now, I want to break down uh, a play for them where they use motion to break eye discipline, and then they use floods, a full field flood, uh, not full field, but a full side flood where they put four guys into the boundary to break down the Bears' defense. We'll take a look at that right now, and we'll talk you through it. So you can see here, Oregon in a pretty standard set. You've got your Y tight end down here, slot receiver, outside receiver up top, right receiver down to the right. One of the first clues that something's going on here is your tailback is in a very wide split to start off with. He's outside over the tight end. This play is designed to create some stress on the defense in a couple different ways. And they catch Cal in man here. You can see these two guys are talking to each other about this alignment. 
who's going to take the inside, who's going to take the outside on the release. Do they banjo it? Do they, do they man it up? What do they do? So that's one part of it. As a play starts, you're going to see motion coming here as well. So now, if you have man here, as this back gets into the box, do they trade it? Does the inside backer take it? These guys, as we just discussed, are going to take these guys. And so these two need to figure out what's going on as this motion comes into the box. So a couple different things. Oregon's going to put four guys out into the boundary here. And I really like this concept. So you're going to get the over route by the tight end. It's going to pull and hold that safety. You're going to get a post by your outside receiver. So it's a double post look here into the boundary. Love that look. You've got a ton of dudes flooding into the boundary. Your back is going to run a rail. So now you've got three into the boundary. As you get motion from your slot receiver, they're going to give the play action fake, and then he's going to be over here for number four. So now you've got four dudes in the boundary. You've got man. There's a communication issue between these guys on who's going to cover him once he goes in motion. You have a communication issue going on right here between these guys on how they're going to handle that as well. And so you've created a lot of stretches in one play. Let's take a look at the play, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, and then we'll talk about one more thing that I love about this play. So motion across, play action fake. Three running through that short side, and the back ends up wide open for the check down from Bo Nix. So that is really nice. I mean, it's a really nice piece of offense. It's super clean. It wasn't a ton of pressure. It happened right now. So all good things for an offense. Finally, a huge part of this that I like, and it's part of the reason that Bo Nix has the time to get off a lot of his passes, is they're extremely effective running the football and so when you run the football very well play action should be very good for you too here they're using what i would call a power pass or trap pass where they are actually going to mimic the action on power so these guys are both going to work down center is going to work back to the one they're going to pull the left guard to kick the end as he comes up field and so to all of these defensive linemen that looks like power that looks like run and the way Oregon runs their RPO and their zone read stuff, as you bring the motion across and they give the fake handoff, this could be a read. Quarterback could read this end. If he stays wide, he could run the power behind that. And so the defense has to stay home as they see this play action pass, as they see this front. If you're keen guards and this guard pulls, you got to be a guy that stays home. You can't rush. You can't get after the passer right now. And so this play action pass, the run action here, takes Cal out of their pass rush and sets them into a run-stopping scheme. You can see guys reading at the front. They're working the backside man-to-man -man on this tackle. These guys had to read and fight pressure at first. Now this end is getting upfield. He sees the guard pulling. He's going to be the spill guy. He's got to be the one that bounces that outside. And so they all have run assignments, run fits. So they're taking care of their run fits as they see this protection. Then as it moves along, they realize pass, and now they start to pass rush and get up the field. Well, Bo Nix has already made his read, getting ready to get that ball on the outside, and it makes it super simple for him with great protection. Well, a great passing game comes at the intersection of excellent pass protection and excellent concepts in the route. Obviously, we just saw Oregon had excellent concepts in the route. And several times during the day, they were throwing the double post concept with stuff tucked in behind it or stuff that accompanied it that made it incredibly difficult to cover. But great pass protection is really the key for them. And they do some unique, unique things on offense in their pass protection that makes it really tough for a defensive line to kind of pin their ears back and get up the field. Because Oregon runs the ball so well, they make it they make a lot of their pass protections look like run to start. You can call it play action if you want, but they're really pass protections built around a run action scheme. And so I'm going to take a look at those, show you what they were doing, why it makes it tough for 
pass rush for the defense and how effective it was for them in the game on Saturday. So here, Oregon's going empty. And there's a couple things that you can do in this formation. If you are not going to sprint, you have to run some kind of base protection. And so it's called a 5-0, which is five dudes to pick up five dudes. And they're going to declare who they're going to pick up. In this case, you have four in the box up front, and they probably declared this as number five would be my guess. Potentially declare this because you've got safety over with a third player here. So either one of those would be a good uh, declare for them to decide who they're going to pick up. So one, two, three, four, five linemen will pick up those five guys, and they're going to work together as a team. Oregon's O-line here does a really nice job of picking up a game, a stunt up front by the defensive line. You're going to see the tackle come down and the end come down and the nose guard for Cal loop. And these three guys work together to pick that up. And you're going to see them do what's called passing off. They're going to pass off this stunt as it, as it goes. So 5-0 right now. It's declared. This tackle is up here. Guard is helping here. And then he's going to look to help back both sides. He's the uncovered guy. So he's the guy that's going to be able to help. So once the tackle engages and that guard is free, you're going to see him come back inside. Head turns back inside. Now you've got four guys for Oregon. One, two, three, four to pick up three guys for Cal. Nobody in that uh, defensive second level. So linebackers are both dropping. It's only four on five. So Oregon has a man advantage here. Now watch as you get the tackle and the end slanting and then the looper, all of these Oregon offensive linemen pass this off. And this is a wonderful job. <clears throat> Center and backside guard take over the tackle as he comes to it. And then the right guard takes over the defensive end and he bumps the defensive tackle, or excuse me, the offensive tackle out to pick up the nose guard on the outside. We'll watch that one more time, and then we'll watch it from the end zone. But it's a really nice job. You can see them, they talk about passing off a block. Watch as the right guard, right here, feels pressure. He turns to pick this up. They've communicated it somehow up there. There's probably some kind of call, or they can do it by bumping a guy off of a block. He bumps that tackle, and the tackle bounces out for the nose guard. So that is fantastic pass pro. That is 5-0 pass pro where you keep five guys in, backs are out. You're already in an empty set, so it's good to go. Let's watch it one time from the end zone. And again, you're going to see this tackle engage here. He locks on. Left guard starts here and then comes back to help to the right side where you have more men. Center is going to end up picking up this tackle who slants to the A-gap. Defensive end slants down to the B gap. He's going to get picked up by the right guard. And eventually this guard is actually going to pass this over. And then as the nose guard loops, he's going to get picked up off by this tackle on the outside. But this is beautiful execution by a very good offensive line. As the slant starts, guys pass it. And everybody's picked up so that Bo Nix can complete the ball downfield on the mesh concept. Really well done. Now Oregon is going to use a dash protection, and I really like what they're doing here. They're going to take the tight end and motion him across to get him outside. On the snap of the ball, you're going to see linemen all turn and give a play-action fake going left. Well, so what the defense has to do is they have to respond by fighting pressure. As these guys turn and run, defense has to fight pressure because that could be a run to their side. So it slows down the pass rush in that regard. As the tight end gets to his outside, he's going to come back in and actually block that edge rusher because it looks like what's called a split zone block with him coming back. So this is a really nice scheme. It's based on run action stuff. Bo Nix is going to drop just a step and then get outside the pocket and attack that way. Mm 
You can see tight end coming across. Hits and sits. Running back comes across. Bo Nix out flat. And finds the throwback wide open. Now they drop this one. But that pass protection is a huge piece of why Bo Nix has time to throw the ball. When you have time, guys can find open space in zone coverage. Finally, they use a scheme off of power, a power look. Power is a gap scheme running game. But they use a scheme off of power where they pull a guard and it makes it look like power. Defense has to fight, run, stay home, and it slows down the pass rush one more time. But a little bit of play action goes a long way for Oregon, as you can see in their pass protection. Let's take a look at that last scheme. So you'll see this is the same play that we looked at before in terms of four to a side passing. And what you're going to get, as I discussed, is motion back here. And you're going to get this guard pulling and kicking, but he becomes the personal protector for the quarterback. As you give the fake as a QB to that running back, he becomes the most uncovered man on the field. Once again, double post, takes the secondary out, rail, gets the linebackers to flow and cover, which leaves this running back entirely uncovered out here in the flat. Easy read by Bo Nix. One, two, three, four. Check it down and let your athletes do the rest. Those guys got to earn their scholarship check too. You see the protection? Cal's defense has to fight it like it's a run. And you end up with the guy wide open for a huge gain on a short pass. So you can see scheme, a huge piece of what Oregon does to protect Bo Nix, to give him extra time. And they're really, really good at running the football, averaging almost 250 yards a game running the football. So you have to honor that. And when you honor the run, then you get time to pass as well. You get guys downfield. If you get four or five in a route with good protection, it's almost impossible to stop as a defense. And so their scheme is fantastic. Their athletes are fantastic. And so incredibly tough to stop out there. We will talk to Coach Wilcox right now, talk about his thoughts on the game. Just wanted to give you a little insight going into that interview in terms of what Cal was seeing, what they had to fight on defense, and they were doing it with limited personnel because of injuries. Right now, let's talk to Coach and get his feelings about the game. Joining me now, head coach Justin Wilcox. And coach, uh, this game against Oregon seemed to have a couple of different faces early on. Defense played extremely well. Uh, and then Oregon seemed to find kind of the answer with some motions, with some movement, with some vertical passing game. You've seen the film now. Talk to me about what was going on in the game on Saturday. Well, you know, I guess defensively, uh, specifically, it was, you know, a number of explosive passes. Um, they... You know, and when they when they got in the pass game, um, we were having a hard time getting to the quarterback. And, you know, the more people we brought, we kind of isolated some of the coverage and that was not really working for us. Um, and then, as you know, when you play zone, the longer the QB can hold the ball, uh, somebody can find a window and get open. So uh, we had some uncharacteristic busts. There was, you know, a handful of busts in coverage, which um, – you know, we obviously need to eliminate. And then there was just some times that the guy had a long time and he completed the ball and we had a hard time getting him on the ground consistently. And I know that, you know, next man up is the answer, right? It doesn't matter who's hurt. The next guy up has got to do his job. And I understand that. But without a ton of reps, too, when you have a team that's doing things to kind of affect your eye discipline, which Oregon does with their motions, with their formations, with their sets, and then they're running vertical passing game, which creates a ton of space. How much harder is it with new bodies out there? Well, um, you know, the, the guys have to do a great job in practice of using the reps that they get and then also utilizing the reps that they're not in to get a mental rep. And um, we all know that there's nothing like playing experience and especially game experience. And so um, I thought the guys were giving us their best effort. We just didn't execute at a high enough level and we lost some matchups. And we talk about it every week. Teams have scheme, right? Everybody's got scheme these days. Oregon scheme, I, I – you know, as a coordinator, as a quarterback, I liked it a lot. Most of their passing downs come off of play action, some form shape, you know, of either full slide protection or some kind of power pass protection where they're pulling a guard. As a defense, you have to kind of take care of the run first on those up front, right? Doesn't that slow down the pass rush? 
Yeah, it does. It does slow down the pass rush at times. Um, we did have, you know, we always chart the number of one-on-ones because at the end of the day, um, whether it's in pass rush, uh, man coverage, zone matchups, tackling, you know, you're going to have to win some one-on-ones and we didn't win enough of those. Um, we had some, again, guys giving great effort. Um, we had a hard time getting to the QB. And when we did, he was a good enough athlete that we had a hard time, you know, keeping him in the pocket or getting him on the ground. So um, they do have a good scheme. Um, they're good coaches. There's a lot of good schemes out there. Um, they have some very good players and we, we just didn't execute well enough to give ourselves a chance late in the game to win. Yeah. And we always talk about athletic QBs. Bo Nix is one of the most athletic QBs you faced all year long. How much does that slow down kind of what you do? And and you talked about it. It shows up on film. There's a couple one-on-ones where you've got him and now somebody has got to make a play and Bo Nix makes the play and our guy doesn't. Yeah. Uh, he's a very talented player. He can run and throw and, you know, there's a good offensive line. They, they do a good job in protection. They're a big group, um, very talented. And so, um, you know, we were going to need to execute at a very high level and we just didn't do that often enough. And whether it was the, you know, run game, the pass rush, um, the coverage component, the tackling, just, uh, we need to be much better in order to, uh, to beat them. What's the key when you're defending a vertical pass game like that? What's the key for you on defense? to kind of keep them in check, keep them underneath everything. Cause there was some stuff where, uh, as you talked about in zone guys running across throwbacks, guys were uncovered. Yeah. So uh, getting to the quarterback first and foremost, and then if they can get five guys out in the route, if, if you get five guys out in the route um, and they're protecting with five and you got four guys rushing, then you gotta, you gotta, you know, find a way to speed the quarterback up. Uh, there were probably too many reps where it looked like seven on seven. And then, in the, in the coverage game, in the zone coverage game, you got matchup rules. Um, and we, we busted a couple matchups in our zone coverage. Uh, and then they will, they'll flood you. You know, there's, I think I said this after the game, if you play zone enough, um, there's a lot of routes built to be quarters and three deep and quarter, quarter, half, whatever the zone is, because you flood them, you high, low people, uh, you put, you know, multiple weapons in one zone. And so you got to get the ball out of the quarterback's hand. Um, so the answer to that is play some man um, and the man stuff. I don't know that that was our best pitch. Uh, just some of the matchups were difficult. So we were trying to mix it up and we just didn't do a good enough job. So we have to help them as coaches, um, you know, perform better. And then uh, when it, when it comes a moment of truth, you know, the player on player, then we got to make some more of those plays. Yeah. So let's switch to the other side of the ball offensively. Got some big plays early on, which was nice to see. The big passes. Let's talk about those first, and then we'll talk about everything else on offense. Talk about the shots that we took. Hunter got a big one. J. Mike got a big one. So talk about that. Yeah, they're, uh, you know, some of our best players uh, are our receivers, and so we wanted to give them chances to make an explosive play. And I thought Jack threw a couple really nice vertical balls to those guys. I mean, early in the game to to uh, J. Michael uh, over there on the press box side, and then uh, you know, Jeremiah had one as well. Um, it was one-on-ones and those are, those are the plays we're talking about, you know, and you get one-on-one and we wanted to put the ball up to, to our playmakers and those guys came down with it. And we're just going to have to create more of those, whether it's, you know, the go balls or the shallow cross stepping through a tackle or whatever it is, just different ways to get our playmakers the ball. Yeah. And this week started to move the pocket just a little bit more. I saw it during the game to some effect. Uh, but we're unable to run the ball effectively again, only 74 yards rushing on the, on the day. Talk about what was going on in the running game. Yeah. I mean, again, it, you know, offense and defense, it's really going to start at the line of scrimmage, you know? Um, so we uh, wanted to get some more run game going to keep us in some, uh, you know, uh, keep us in rhythm and move the chains and not be in third and long. Uh, so we, we had a, a few good runs, but not not enough. And then we took some negative plays, you know, uh, whether it's sack or a, a minus run uh, that we have to just eliminate. You know, it's hard to come back from those things. And so uh, they're a, a talented unit. And whether it's, uh, you know, the one-on-one -on -one block at the point of attack, um, you know, anywhere from the offensive linemen to the tight ends, um, you know, we just got to do a better job to create some positive runs and uh that way it get, gets some manageable third downs how important is that i mean you uh, obviously defensively you want to keep guys behind the sticks behind the chains and put pressure on them force them into situations where you know they're going to pass how important is it talk about it 
staying on schedule, getting four yards a chunk, breaking off where now you can stay within your playbook, anything you want to run. Yeah. I'd say unless you're, you're one of those offenses that has the ability to just, you know, create explosives, you know, at any moment, um, you know, staying on schedule is important. And for us, third and long has not been good. So, you know, moving the ball forward, uh, run game, pass game, uh, staying out of those obvious drop back games where the, the defense can pin their ears back and just go uh, trying to minimize those situations the best we can. Uh, we can, we, we need to be much better there. Yeah. And so, and I said it after the game, Kai Milner comes in, he had a great game. There's, you can't compare what Jack was doing, what Kai was doing, right? It doesn't create this quarterback controversy. Everybody always wants to make it that way. But just to talk about Kai, I thought Kai did a nice job when he got in the game. He, he functioned, right? He operated as a quarterback, and I thought he looked really good for, for some of his first action. Yeah, I, th I think he did what you would hope to see. Uh, again, it's, it's hard to compare the two performances because it's different uh, circumstances uh, that those guys are playing in. But I thought Kai did some good things, and he did what you would, would hope uh, that he would do. And so uh, we're going to continue to work with him and um, – keep him ready to go at this point in the season. I know this team is kind of self-motivated doing their thing. What is the message to the team to kind of stay dialed in, focused in game in game out, rep in rep out at this yeah. point? Yeah. Respond, you know, uh, we don't need emotional reactions. Um, we need guys to be purposeful and uh, you know, conviction in what they're doing uh, from meetings to practice and, you know, how we're, living off the field, it, it all matters. And so, um, yeah, th this is not easy. You know, when you're not winning, it's everybody's disappointed and frustrated. It, it's not, uh, you know, everybody feels that. So the way to rid yourself of that is to win games. Well, how do you do that? You got to, you know, every person's got to get a little bit better. We got to, we can't have the bus, you know, we need to be talking about the, the details of a call or a technique. And so those things are big. And some of these guys that are, playing a lot more reps, you know, it's their time now. That's why they signed to, to come play here. And there's going to be a number of guys getting more and more reps uh, for various reasons. And uh, we'll need those guys to step up and give us their best effort. And this time of season, obviously you get guys who are dinged up, who have been injured, any guys coming back, any injuries that kind of stand out right now? Um, we're hoping, you know, day to day with Lou Hearns, uh, Moe Yosefa, Odua, uh, more and more. And there's a couple guys um, that, you know, I think one more guy that'll be out for the year that we didn't announce yet was uh, Mason Starling. He'll be done for the season, unfortunately. Uh, and a couple of the other guys, it's going to be day to day. Good luck this week coming up. I know that you got a little bit of rain in the schedule, uh, but we talked off camera and I know that's not going to affect what you guys do. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks coach. So frustrating day, especially from a defensive standpoint. Oregon's been rolling up. Since that Georgia game, they've been averaging 49 points a game. Uh, and again, 42 versus the Bears, who's, who have a very good defense, uh, is nothing to joke about. They, that is a good offense. Offensively, once again, the Bears just unable to get anything going. It starts up front. You know, I don't want to keep beating on the offensive lineman. I love the offensive lineman. I love the big guys. Uh, and I know they're fighting hard, but at the Power 5 level, Fighting hard ain't enough. Just got to get better up front, figure out a way to make stuff work, potentially, hopefully, get some screens in the game uh, and find attack points this week. SC is going to be a tough opponent. They are every bit of ta as talented, if not more talented, than that Oregon team. And so Bears have their work cut out for them this week down in the LA Memorial Coliseum. I will have my preview of the Trojans coming up later on this week. For today, I appreciate you guys watching. For Bear Insider and Ultimate Insider, I'm Mike Pulaski. Go Bears.